You know, <laughs> I'm going to cover this. I am actually a non-practicing Catholic. However, that being said, I was grown up in a church family. Okay. So both of my parents worked for the church, various churches, Episcopal, Presbyterian, uh, Jewish temples, and, um, the Catholic Church, which Catholicism is my mother's religion. That's that's on my mother's side. My dad actually grew up in a, I think they were Methodist, but they kind of like, I, I got such an impression from this that it was just a job. Like it didn't really mean a whole lot other than community, um, praise, uh, they, they, they were highly praised for their musical abilities because my mom was the soprano, my dad was the organist and musical director. And so, uh, I would have to spend an hour after church every day waiting for them to get done accepting all the compliments for their beautiful singing and, and playing and so on and so forth. But I, I was raised in a household where my grandmother would come in the room at night already reciting her prayer cards to the saints and then put me down on my knees so that I could recite Our Father, Hail Mary, and Angel of God. Every night I had a three foot tall Hail Mary statue on my dresser and I had holy water sitting next to me on the dresser every night. Which, by the way, I used to drink it because I didn't realize this was sacrilegious. And I was about five, right? I was, I was five and under while I was doing this because I didn't realize this was a problem. But I had to go to catechism. I've definitely been around the block on this. And I am currently a non-practicing Catholic. Which is, I think, probably why Andrea dropped on one of her more recent live streams that American Catholics are a little less um, militant about their beliefs. Because, yeah, like we do kind of have this privilege of we can challenge church ideas and that's how you actually change and move the church is by actually challenging their ideas. And we've been doing it slowly and that's why Pope Francis has been one of our better popes, right? Okay, so I do have some background in this area despite the fact that I I am not a regular attendee, right? I'm a Merriam Barium crowd. I show up for weddings and funerals and holidays. Anyway, let's go with this because I love it. I love watching Trump try to pretend that he's a fucking religious person when he he does not give a shit, you guys. <laughs> on the i never fully understand what show this is the flashpoint victory show it's a religious christian thing okay and it's actually hilarious what happens they one of the questions is framed about how important trump's faith is to him and it's really funny because obviously it's not true trump has never been religious but he started to pretend to be religious because he ran as a republican this yeah. just gets like really awkward and trump spits out a word salad about religion no he didn't just run republican and try and get the evangelical base that way um which that's the only base he really got by the way he, he got the Republicans and he got the evangelicals because they're like all afraid. These are mostly Pentecostals, by the way, David. These are people who think that the end of the world is coming. And the irony of it, <laughs> the fucking irony of this bullshit, is that if they actually believed in the book of Revelations, they would see that Trump is the most likely person to be the Antichrist. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Your faith is very important to you. You've said yeah. that publicly. Your faith yeah. is important. Trump has said a lot of things that aren't true. But what does that mean to the man, Donald Trump? Well, I think it means a lot of things, but more to perhaps your listeners and the people that right. will watch this show. And it's a very large group of people. Uh, for instance, I was the only president ever go, go, to go to the big rally they had in Washington, right. which they have on a yearly basis. But I, was I guess he means the March for Life, I guess. Oh, yeah, the only one yeah, ever to go yeah. as a president. 
city yeah. president. He's literally talking about like the anti-abortion rally. By the way, there's a lot of American Catholics who disagree with that, and has we've been pushing the church to to uh, retract their opinions on reproductive rights. Um, there have been a lot of movements within the church. There are a lot of groups within the Catholic. I'm talking about the Catholic Church that um, have uh, tried to lobby the church and change their opinions on certain topics. And that's one of them is reproductive rights. Their, their position on contraceptives and uh, is, is wrong. It's flatly wrong. It's flatly wrong. And, um, you know, despite the fact that we have a hierarchy within the church, the members of the church do lobby leadership and, and say, hey, you know what? That's not right. Can you please freaking change the church opinion on this? Uh, for life. Hmm. And people were shocked, but even Ronald Reagan didn't want to take that step. And it was very close, always very close, as you know, to the White House. It's almost like walking distance. You know, Ronald Reagan made a lot of mistakes during his presidency, but he also had a lot of wins. And that's why he's he goes down in history as a respected president. Trump is not going to go down that way. I mean, when people talk about Reagan, they're going to talk about the fact that uh, his administration was pumping drugs into black communities. They're going to talk about how he tried to call ketchup a vegetable, but they're also going to talk about how he destroyed communist Russia. He by by bluffs. It was all fucking bluffs, but he, he was able to get it done. And um it ended a cold war. It ended a cold war. So that's what he's going to go down for in history, despite the fact that he probably had dementia in the second term, at least. Because they announced his Alzheimer's not long after he left office. Anyway, Trump is, oh my God, Trump is fucking crazy. And he, he you know what, you evangelicals who actually buy up his bullshit, can you be for real? Dude never even shows up to church. He doesn't, he has no church experience. And any person who has ever attended church knows this because of the way he speaks about religion. But I went and I was proud of that. <laughs> I think we've been given uh, credit for doing that. But you can tell Trump is deeply religious, deeply yeah. spiritual from this answer. Oh People would God, say that was yeah. a courageous thing to do. I didn't <laughs> view it as courageous. I viewed it as the right, right. thing to do. But um, I was uh, born uh, into a family where my father was religious, my mother was religious. Uh, I wouldn't say they were you know, going to church every single day. <laughs> they were, you know, they were believers. They were very privately religious. Well, I can tell you straight up, my family members were going to church every single day. My grandmother attended every single morning. My mom does now. And probably my dad does too, because he's constantly there to um, work on the musical direction of the church that he works at and the temple he's also he also plays for a temple such that no one knew it even me and and strong believers uh i went to sunday school uh which was good and which was expected you know, <laughs> oh like, really you, everybody goes to sunday right. school right and when you think about it the world is so different now anyway so you know you get the just they slammed Hillary Clinton for ad adopting a sort of Southern drawl when she would speak in front of some Southern crowds. In my mind, that's nothing compared to pretending to be devoutly religious and against abortion when clearly you, you aren't and you haven't been your entire life. Right. Trump, of course, there's no... You never waste the opportunity to claim that the left is simply against religion. They're against religion. They're totally right. against oh, religion. Okay. How do you get elected on these things? They get elected by cheating. Right. Of course, the truth. This dumbass. This dumbass. Literally, the priests that we have down in South Orange County, which is fairly dominantly Republican down here, write up um, basically their, their speeches. Their, um, what do they call that? It's when they have to, they, it's uh, when they give a sermon, 
it's a sermon, right? So, um, they, uh, down here are constantly trying to temper the Republicans to be more considerate of the people around them and to be less judgmental, to be less hateful. These are people in deep red areas of Orange County that are priests and have the platform to do it. Trump doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. This is where he comes to fundraise, you guys. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. Is what my... Listen, you can ask different people on the left, you'll get different answers. I'm against religion playing a role in civil government. I love freedom of religion. Freedom to follow any religious doctrine that speaks to you or not to follow any. And to have none of that impact public policy nor how you were treated under the law. That's what I'm for as a member of the left. I'm not against religion. Trump then said he's the only person who can stop Israel from getting nuked by Iran, which is interesting. And there's a lot to say about this. Under the Democrats, Israel will be destroyed because Iran will have a nuclear weapon and they'll destroy Israel. They will use it, too. So when you say I fight, I fight because we have no choice. We have no choice. And there's nobody else I don't believe that knows how to do this. Right. So right. it's really important to understand that the way in which Trump supporters are, quote, pro-Israel is a very specific thing from the evangelical Christian community. The, the, the viewers of this show, okay, the viewers of this show support Israel, not because of any concern about anti-Semitism or Jews. Or, it's because they believe that supporting Israel will precipitate the second coming of Christ, after which most or all of the Jews die, depending on which belief system you adhere to. That's why they are, quote, supporters of Israel, and that's what Trump is paying lip service to. And then lastly, Trump saying the Johnson Amendment is a terrible thing. If you don't know what that is, I'll tell you in a moment. I'm asking, why aren't you use your power? Oh my God, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Like, everybody's going to fucking die. <laughs> you you have uh, the book of Revelations, and um, everybody's going to fucking die, right? And they've gone through these doomsday predictions multiple, multiple, multiple fucking times. We had the Y2K crisis. We had the Mayan calendar, and we had hale -Bop come through. And then the, what was that group called in San Diego with their sneakers that they fucking all drank the Kool-Aid and killed themselves because they thought there was a alien spaceship trailing the, the comet that they were going to be able to like, I don't know, teleport to or some such bullshit. Like we've had so many fucking conspiracy theories even before the internet was an actual thing. And, um, yeah. It, it's just weak-minded people that buy up these fairy tales and think, okay, well, I got to kill myself now. Let's kill myself now. Because um, some preacher told me that's what we need to do. Let's go. Or so that you can be treated better. And then one person said, well, we have the Johnson Amendment, which basically would take our tax exemption and our tax basis away from us, right. which is unbelievably severe, would put, put you out of business. I said, uh, so that actually the people... And Look at how quickly he got to tax cuts, y'all. <laughs> Look at how quickly. Okay, religious man. <laughs> Look, at, Look at how quickly we got to tax cuts. That's what Republicans, they were like, we're going to reduce your taxes. Uh, I'm sorry, man wealth gap like the middle class is down and that's your biggest voting base we're not getting fucking paid because you keep giving money to the billionaire class I was at the top of trump tower way up high and i looked down at the sidewalk and you see all the people i said so anybody off the street then you're saying has more power than the people in this room because okay so let me explain to you what trump is saying here no no the let me let me because i literally saw this motherfucker speak in 2000 okay when he was he was trying to do a presidential bid that year too um 
Trump constantly has this story that his bankruptcies were a good thing because he was able to pull himself up from his bootstraps. David, I literally saw this motherfucker speak at a Tony Robbins convention at the pond in Anaheim in 2000. And he had the, the press all uh, came around to cover his speech because it was rumored that he was going to run for president that year too because he was constantly running for president over and over again just to promote his media ventures like the the apprentice he said that he was worth less than a homeless person on the street because he was in such debt over that bankruptcy. And he has been sticking by that story for fucking decades. That he was worth less than a, per a homeless person on the New York streets. Motherfucker was going to Trump Tower to sleep at night and says he was worth less than a homeless person on the streets. He can twist anything. And these motherfucking stupid people will buy up all of his bullshit. I saw him at that Tony Robbins convention where he tried to give us a motivational speech that bankruptcy's cool. It's cool if you fail because if you're rich as fuck, you'll still get loans and you can rebuild. But most people don't have that advantage. Johnson Amendment is a tax code provision from 1954. When we say nonprofit churches aren't allowed to do politics or they jeopardize their tax exempt status, what we're talking about partially comes from the Johnson Amendment. The Johnson Amendment said if you're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, you can't endorse or oppose political candidates. And of course, as we know, dozens and dozens, hundreds, thousands of churches, particularly evangelical churches, um, and other forms of Christianity, Protestantism, regularly do politics and often overtly endorse or oppose candidates. They should lose their tax-exempt status. Trump is saying, no, it's too harsh because then it, it actually uh, makes them impotent in some way relative to random people. Well, the whole point is we will give you something special, something privileged under the tax code, which is nonprofit status, but you can't engage in politics because that's a way to circumvent all of the campaign finance infrastructure that is there for a particular reason. So Trump doesn't like that. Trump wants to get rid of that. This is the height or the bottom of the barrel, depending on your view, of pandering to a group of voters that, yes, Trump does need. He rightly assesses that he needs them in the most pathetic way possible. By now, all of us know how creepy it is to talk to a friend about something and then get ads that are related. When you use a free email service from a big tech corporation, your okay. emails... Okay, you're done, and the rain's coming down pretty hard now. The fact is, Trump is not religious. I mean, I'm not all that religious, and I'm more religious than he is. Like, I actually can recite the prayers. I doubt he can. Um, y'all fools if you believe that that man actually cares about religion.